Hello, everyone. This is your kick-ass career coach, Mo, with one of my favorite clients, Miliana Demori. Hello, Miliana. Hi, Mo. Hi, everybody. I love being with you. Oh, thank you so much. And just so everyone knows how impressive this, this interview is, Miliana, uh, I want to let everyone know that you are calling in from Croatia. This is your home. And uh, the, we are so blessed that the internet and communication devices are so advanced now that we can feel like we're in the same room. And it's so delightful to have you here. Miliana, you and I have been working together for two years now? Yeah, almost. I think we have our anniversary in a month. Okay. <laughs> and I, I, I believe I recall that you came across me because of the um, Hay House work that I did a couple of years ago. And, um, and let's just talk a little bit about, so you came, you came through my work the same way everyone else does. We had a clarity call. We talked about what was uh, not happening for you in your current career path and some of the things that were going in the wrong way. But let's, let's talk about um, kind of what your life was like before the clarity call and what was going on and just give us a little, a little snapshot of Miliana's life uh, two years, two years ago. Yeah, so I had great successes in my sporting career. So I'm um, champion in three different sports, kickboxing, Olympic weightlifting, powerlifting, set national records in Croatia, in Australia, Western Australia. Um, I was a radio host. I finished university, a few certificates, a master practitioner of humanistic and linguistic psychology. And at that time, I was married for three years to a wonderful man. Yeah. And so I was just, you know, having fantastic results in that. But in my career, I did not feel fulfilled. Mm -hmm. um, I, had, I had big dreams and they seemed and felt too big to me. Ah. So, they, so seemed, I, they seemed impossible? They seemed impossible. And so I would speak about things that I really, really, really want to do. Yeah. But I never did them. Oh, so these were dreams that were out here somewhere that you were like, oh, one day I want to travel the world uh, coaching people and doing stuff like that. And you're like, yeah, my dream. That was my dream. Exactly. My dream was to be a international coach. I wanted to help people, uh, specifically people with trauma, because mm -hmm. um, I was a child um, through the former Yugoslavia war. So I was a war refugee in Germany, lived in Germany for six years. And then we had a traumatic event coming back. And then we lived in Australia for eight years. And then my husband and I came for a honeymoon here to Europe. And um, he was fighting during a honeymoon. I was his trainer in the corner, wiping his blood off his face. And then he came to Croatia. <laughs> and he's like, I love you, let's stay. And I was like, oh, what do you mean let's stay? I've got jobs in Australia. I'm a personal trainer, I'm a lecturer, I'm a radio host, um, do um, NLP, HNLP, I work in the office. So here we just stayed here totally spontaneously and um, then I did my sport results. But the things that I really, really want to do is um, I was kind of running away from the coaching because it had something like a spiritual element. And I was very logical, it had to make sense, you know, when you, you know, lift the weight. Mm -hmm. That's how much weights you lift it up, you throw it down, mm -hmm. done. And then I realized like, oh, it's more fun changing people's lives than lifting up and dropping. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, here you were with these big dreams of being a coach someday, but it didn't quite 100% fit with how you navigated the world. And, and I know in, in working with you, um, maybe there was some things about uh, how you were in the world and how you presented yourself that weren't quite feeling right. Yeah, yeah, so the dreams were too big mm -hmm. and I thought, so I had to believe I had to do it all by myself. Mm -hmm. And when I have this belief, it just, everything feels heavy. Ah. And before I did anything in my life, because I had that belief, you know, finishing university or doing certain projects or selling certain things, like everything felt heavy. It took me a lot of time, sleepless nights. So 
this belief kept, kept alive. So for me, moving forward felt really, really heavy. Mm. And um, but also happens because there was still stuff for me to work on, you know, maybe some limiting beliefs, traumas, yeah. um, projections that I had even, you know, towards people, towards my husband, mm. they did not serve me. And um, I was hiding. I was not comfortable standing out. Um, I did not put like the difference between like when I started in with you or dating my husband is like, I would not put on makeup, didn't have red hair. Like I would play down. I would really play down because that's what a good girl does. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I remember, um, well, when we first got to know each other, you had told me your story. Do you mind telling it now about um, how you got into NLP? And, yeah, so, and why don't you describe that? But I mean, you and I know it well, and we, we both practice it in the work that we do. Just for people who might not know what that is, just tell us a little bit about what NLP is and, and then tell us your story, if you will. So uh, NLP and HNLP, so it's neuro-linguistic programming and humanistic neuro-linguistic psychology. So they're both, um, which I, I experience and I use them for therapeutic ways to overcome limiting beliefs. Um, for me, it was for sporting results. So in every sporting competition, I set a national record. And for me, that was enough proof. So I had a long period. So I became a coach 2010, a master practitioner 2010. But I really personally, for me to feel authentically a strong coach, I wanted to have real life results because I believe in facts. I believe in results. And so that was my additional kind of like apprenticeship I put myself under. And how I came across NLP and those techniques was that... Um, I was sad, I was depressed, I had an eating disorder for 13 years. Um, I, um, you know, it was even suicidal when I was a teenager. So I just felt really, really, really sad and heavy. Yeah. And then um, I came across it and the possibility that life, that we can influence our life, the possibility that life can be a little bit lighter or that we can manage our emotions. I was like, that was revolutionary. Right. right. They're I would not just, just things that come out of the blue that are going to take over our, our day. They're just, yeah, yeah. It, is, it is revolutionary. And, and realizing that we don't have to complain. Yeah. Not everybody, it's not everybody else's fault that my life is horrible. So taking that responsibility for all my results, uh, the way I feel, for me, that was life changing. Yeah. Absolutely. And I overcame my eating disorder. So here you are learning these wonderful techniques. It's, it's technically the science of success. I think that's what they more or less uh, shorthand call NLP. And, and humanistic NLP goes, I know, goes deeper. Um, but, but basically the techniques are whatever you think and feel in combination with each other is going to eventually be how you're wired for interpreting the world. So if we can and fire things differently and how we want to interpret the world, we will literally change our lives. And I'm simplifying it, obviously. Um, but, but here we have the opportunity to actually think differently. And, and a lot of people don't really understand some of these things, as, as you know, Miliana, because you coach women now around the world. Um, dream. Check. Um, <laughs> <laughs> saving lives around the world. It's awesome. Um, most people don't really understand that they do have 100% control over what they think. And they also have control over their feelings. We may have feelings we don't like, but we have control over what we do with them. And, and I know that these concepts are, are foreign to a lot of people, but our work, yours, your work and my work, as we know, um, is, is really all about helping uh, people understand that. And you and I both primarily work with women. And uh, this is really, really important for women to understand because most of our lives, we were raised uh, by other people telling us how to act, how to think, how to be, how to play small, how to not offend other people, how to take care of everyone else, how to attend to this, that, this, 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 this. And meanwhile, here we are just being sucked dry. Ooh, all this energy going out and out and out. So... One day you're on the internet or on the Hay House radio thing and you see something for a clarity call. Let's, let's, let's talk about that a little bit because here you are kind of living a 
kick-ass existence on one hand. You're your weightlifting champion, your sporting champion, your 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 master HNLP practitioner. Tell us about that that minute when you said, you know what, maybe I'll talk to this woman. That was when um, I injured my spine. So at one of the European Championships, I um, injured my spine. One of my discs popped, and the the liquid got out. So my weightlifting career came to an end, and um, I was just in pain 27 months, months. And now I can see it as a gift because I was living small. I lived, you know, I lived a fantastic life and I was yeah. grateful. Yeah. But deep inside of me, I knew I was playing small. Like there, there was this yearning that I want to be a full-time coach. I want to help other women overcome traumas, low self-esteem, eating disorders, blockages, anything that's holding them back. Like that was my dream. And then the remainder was like, well, how do I do this? I have to do it all by myself. You know, this negative self-talk that you would call gremlins. Yes. <laughs> I was, um, I, I read your article, bring your soul to work. And, and that um, the title for me was just bring your soul to work. Wow. <laughs> and it's like you yeah, don't don't quit your job but bring your soul to work it's be mm -hmm. who you are be your best version yes. and that's what i love about the coaching it's not just like quit your job you know it'll take care of you it's like no no your like, uh, <laughs> coach gives practical ways how to um, how to negotiate in tough meetings how to ask for a raise how to say no how to um stand in your power um you know, how to change a current situation. And that's the biggest transformation. It's like not uh, running away and, you know, living in India or those. So for me, that was the perfect combination of business, mm -hmm. real results, spirituality. Because I think a lot of women that are on the top in various careers are missing that one element and that is true connection and spirituality. Yes. Especially the one of the most profound things that I experienced with your coaching, with all the women that go through your course and that are in the grad group and in the mastermind is a group of supportive women. Yeah. Real supportive women, mm -hmm. no backstabbing, no neck. Like it's just, you feel so safe to be who you are. Mm -hmm. And then you realize no matter how many successes you have, university degrees, millions of dollars in the account, you still sometimes will feel sad and insecure. And this is such a safe place to, you know, let it out and go back into your power zone, be coached, and then go out and conquer the world until you need a little bit of like a kick in the ass again. <laughs> and, you know, you mentioned a few things that um, there's some stories out there. So there's some stories out there about women not supporting other women. And there's some stories out there about women not being able to be vulnerable in front of other women, et cetera. There's, there's, there's these beliefs that are kind of out there. And, mm -hmm. um, and I think in most instances, women have not allowed themselves to be open and vulnerable and trust others in, in a way that this is like, this is not normal. And I think, you know, that yourself and you're involved in, um, in all of my groups at this point, um, this is a new thing for women to trust each other and to 100% unconditionally support each other in their journey. And for some, it's the first time that they ever really have trusted other women. And I, I don't even like saying that, but, but I know what they've shared with me and what they've shared in the, in the coaching sessions. And I know um, from the perspective of having a, a, a group of women who are just letting each other be seen in their vulnerability and in their strength. And you've been, you were very vulnerable in a lot of the coaching sessions that we had, you allowed yourself to really feel things that, um, that I know that you were keeping under control because it was a little dangerous to let them out, but you knew that you had to release those blocks because they were holding you back. That was exactly what was keeping you from your dreams. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't a career strategy. It was actually like, you know, relationships or 
traumatic events in the family that just, you know, you have to, you have to cry, you know, when you, when you open up for the first time and then yes. when you feel safe when people are there just um, with a presence and give you like beautiful advice, mm-hmm. and then move forward and get ideas and strategies how to deal with it. Yes. Yeah. So uh, here you are coming along in the workshop. Um, you're starting to anticipate being a coach. You're starting to think about charging. Yeah, that was a problem. <laughs> Those were a few sessions. Uh, getting into one's sense of self worth, and um, and I know as as you as you finish the the workshop, you had some ideas about how you could actually do this dream. You want to take us to kind of like that point where you were like, wait a minute, maybe this dream isn't way out here. Maybe it's right here. Yeah. Yeah. So number one is again, using all the tools that you're giving and projecting yourself and goal setting and realizing, okay, this goal is big, but you know, everyday things that I can do is I can write articles. I can record videos. Mm -hmm. I can offer, uh, coaching, um, word of mouth. So the thing was action, action, action. You know, it doesn't have to be grandiose and dramatic. Every so that was for me. Like so, when I was writing articles and they got great responses, then I wrote another article and then another and then videos and then I, that's how it started from there. Is like putting myself out there. Um, when I started recording videos, it took me five, ten goes until I was. <laughs> And again, it took me a few months for me to be authentic in front of the camera. I would be like, you know, stiff and, and so for me, one big, um, actually when I was in Miami last year at yeah. the retreat and we met first time in real life, yeah. and I recorded a video at the villa and um, about, uh, about something about, you know, self-empowerment. And my husband messaged me, he's like, this is you. And that meant a lot because that means I relaxed. I yeah. didn't have to impress anybody. So now when I speak in front of the camera, I speak like I would to my husband, yeah. to my best friend, to while we have coffee. Mm-hmm. Like, so that's, that's what brings, like, again, it's, it's action, it's practice. It's moving into places where I felt uncomfortable, but I knew that's where the growth was. Right. And so, and, and probably, mm-hmm. I just wanted to say something about... Uh, uh, being how you would be with a friend, I bet now on video you're actually even more yourself than you might be with a friend. Because with a friend, I don't know about your friends, but we have uh, we have rules built on who we are with that person. We may not be aware of it, but that's how relationships are. We have certain rules about I'm this way, you're that way, or we have mm, what's the right thing to say a person we are with that person and we we just create this over time it's just a natural way of how humans interact we just inherently create rules about how we interact with each other and so i'm guessing that maybe you've gotten to a point now where you're on video with absolutely no rules and you are showing up exactly who you really are without having to be smart or be sensitive or be funny like without having to be you just are is that, is that a true statement? Absolutely. <laughs> Wait, you and don't have to agree. <laughs> that's, that's true. Like we do put on little hats and roles yeah. depending who we are. But, but again, less and less, the, way, the more we stand in our power, you realize that people will get angry when you become yourself because they got used to you pretending you're the nice girl, you're the helper. And then the moment you start putting healthy bound, boundaries and putting yourself first, there will be some fraction mm-hmm. and uh, the, what can happen from that only good things can happen because you are with yourself 24 hours. I'm with myself for 24 hours. So I want to fall asleep. I used to, I remember now I fell asleep grumpy. I woke up grumpy, worried. Worry was not one of my major emotions. Worry, 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 worry. What will happen? Like worst case scenarios. Yes. Well, and you had lots of reasons to worry because you were a child of war. Yeah. You were traumatized as a young person. So if someone has a, a, a good reason to worry, it would be you. 
but in the work that I know that we've done and you've done um, with others as well, releasing uh, some of those patterns and some of those blocks was exactly what needed to happen for this dream to feel that it was in, it was in you and it was possible. Yes. And I know last, go ahead, sorry, go ahead. With, uh, with everything that we've done and all the work that I've put in myself, it's like I was already first here. Yes, you right. Know, happened. Yes, exactly. So we have to have this, this uh, thought that it's possible. We have, to, we have to think that it's possible. We have to. And there has to be then an integration of the possibility with who we are. So we have to sometimes grow into what we think is possible. We have to become a higher version of ourself. Um, and when you and I were in Miami last year, um, I know that you had uh, some thoughts about speaking in front of uh, groups internationally, having your own workshops, and and basically being known as a as an international transformational coach. Um, I had the absolute pleasure and opportunity to have you do one of the sessions in my retreat last year. Yeah, and so um, you invited me to present at your, at your retreat. Yes, yeah, so it was so great. Um, and, and I know, uh, you, you might want to just talk about the things that you put on your goal sheet and the things that have happened over the last 12 months, just go ahead and rattle off some of those things. Cause even one came, uh, came to your mind this morning that you, um, or yesterday, I guess it was that you have achieved that you put on, on your, I want to accomplish someday. Well, there was a lot. Um, again, so before I started uh, being coached by you and did your online course uh, I had big dreams but um, moving forward it was heavy so I got more accountability doing action results so things that I've done and it turned out better than expected <laughs> uh, real estate so mm -hmm. we have um, passive income from real estate here in tourism um, I'm an online coach I travel I can work from anywhere um, I feel I've become a better person, a better wife, more harmonious in my relationship because I, um, I developed myself. I created a stronger version of myself, mm -hmm. not hiding be behind, you know, anyone else's results. So, uh, which no one expected. So that was my story. Um, and, um, one of my other dreams is, or was, I started writing a book, which was like, literally a self-help book i tried to help myself with one of my issues that i had and that was i was jealous in my marriage. i would get upset with nothing i would make up stories in my head projection yeah. and i realized um that everything was a projection because my parents had a very dysfunctional marriage very very dysfunctional and very abusive physically emotionally and so those fears were driving my actions. So I could not trust my intuition because it was blurred with my traumas. And so that was, um, I started writing a book, How to Overcome My Jealousy, which was just, just pure research, like researching for almost a year, how to do it and trying on myself and talking about it. Mm -hmm. And I can say that I think I made it. <laughs> a year and a half of working on myself that's like nothing though if you think about your lifetime exactly but you had to intend for it and you had to know it was possible and and then you had to dive in and you dove in yeah and when 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 i was very honest with myself and i thought about can i imagine myself reacting differently can i imagine myself being a wife that's not jealous would not imagine me as me my self-image and I was like oh, of course if I can't imagine it I cannot create it I'll always go back to what I think is possible yes that's where I started it you know pushing out researching what's possible uh, healing what needed to be healed learning how to learning that I can trust like life skills that later just naturally translated into career right right so I know that your husband's very happy with how you've evolved. Mm. Your business is booming on the, on the uh, rental real estate side. Your business is booming as a transformational coach. You're clearly happy. And, and, and knowing you for, for how long I've known you, this is exactly who you are. Let's just call it most of the time. All of us have 
have a minute or two where we might not be feeling uh, totally powerful and, and wonderful. Um, all of this has come together for you because you have done the work on yourself. What was the most challenging piece of your journey so far, Milian? What was the most challenging piece? Um, for me, it was, well, I was, maybe still I'm a perfectionist. So admitting that I, asking for help, admitting that I have a problem, problems. Mm. That was the biggest thing because when I could do that, it's like, well, maybe I can ask for guidance. Maybe I can say, maybe that, you know, even if it's not a problem, but a challenge in this area and allow myself to be guided. That was for me the first big step. And then building, building my confidence, move, moving forward with, um, even though I felt discomfort and nervous and afraid, I would still do the talk. I would still do the seminar. I would still do the competition. Yeah. So over, overcoming, overcoming emotions that in the past would have held me back, but not anymore. So great. So great. Well, I'm, I'm delighted, first of all, to, to revisit this road with you because it's been, it's been an absolute delight to know you for, for these two years and to work with you, to coach you, and now to actually work with you. We're gonna be side by side again at my retreat. Um, I have clients that I sometimes send your way for the HNLP work because you do such a great job of helping, uh, helping people break through energetic uh, barriers that are just, that need, need specific intervention. You do such a brilliant job with that work. So it's always uh, a delight for me to, to send a client your way to do that work. And, um, we're just going to keep putting it out there, Miliana, that you and I are just going to do more and more work together. Uh, we do have this like vision out there that we're going to do something in Europe soon together. And um, we could just, I guess we could just maybe change the world together. What do you think? I'm not sure. It's easier together. And um, that's another big dream. I love it. And like um, another thing that I really would love to, to share that was again, important for me to even start working with you was moving from a place of asking for allowance you know as a woman am i allowed to do this is like you know thinking about it oh yeah investment you know yeah investment education and yourself so for me it was important of course to have my husband's support which a lot of you know some women women don't have partner support but the way uh, it just it made me a better person uh, more courageous. I had an more direction. I got, I got things done, and I um, I, th- I felt that even though it was scary, I was like, I really want to do this. I think this is going to um, make a change, and because I did the work, it it worked. Right. And, yes. Uh, <laughs> well, you know that from being an athlete. Yeah. Yeah. That you know, you don't lift the weight, you don't get stronger. And you could talk about lifting weight all day long, but if you don't lift the weight, um, it's not gonna it's not gonna build your strength up. Um, this this strength that you have, I'll say, achieved, even though it's 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 a journey. We're always growing and expanding. Um, this work that you've done has been inspiring to me, and I know you've inspired other of my clients because you and I uh, know that we've you've done some great work and we've done some work together. And I'm looking forward to doing more work with you. If you had to give a woman who's on the other side of the clarity call, some advice from where you sit now, two years later, what would you say to her? Um, Well, it's, even though it's scary and um, everything is, you know, like, should I do this? Should I, am I allowed to invest in myself? I would just say, say yes to yourself. You will never, ever regret becoming a better better version of yourself it's it's being you but it's just you without the blockages you without the fear and um once you feel the support that you are giving and your coaches and gene and once you feel that support once you are held accountable like we are creating miracles like i am living my dream yes i'm 33 (laughs) 
I'm living my dream. Yes. You know, many years ago, I, would, I was dreaming about it. I'm living it now. And it is possible. And it, um, if, you, if, you, if you made the call, say yes, because there's this big part of you that inspired you to give the call. Yeah. And, you know, Mo, you are an angel in so many lives. Um, I remember Angel called you an angel too, but that, that's true. Some people in our lives are guides and angels yeah. and, and they see the best in us and they see the possibilities. They don't see our fears. And that's what you do. You don't mm-hmm. see my fears. She's like, well, of course you can be an international coach. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm the only woman from my hometown region ever presenting in America slash Miami. Unheard of. Yes. Unheard of. It's impossible. It's How impossible. could someone who is a Croatian uh, war refugee possibly be an expert on success techniques in the U.S.? That's impossible. And as a matter of fact, at the age of 33, that can't possibly be done. No, no. So that's <laughs> all I'm saying. Like, if you made the phone call, you know you want to get it done. So... It's stay with, stay with the bravery, stay with the soul, and um, not one person has regretted it. Some of right. my friends, some of my friends and clients have worked with you, and they were thinking, should I do this? And I'm like, absolutely, yes. Look at my results. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, and you recently just sent um, a beautiful woman who was a client of yours um, into the workshop, and she has just become a such a powerful, powerful version of herself. And um, I mean, it's just, we just recently saw her on, on Saturday on a, on a call together and she's just, I mean, it's just inspirational just to see where she is right now. Um, so um, I really, really appreciate you, Miliana, coming and sharing your story. Uh, the whole purpose of this interview series is to help women understand that these possibilities for their life are available to them. Uh, you know, it's so easy for our intellectual brain to go, yeah, it worked for Miliana, but it's not going to work for me. Well, then go listen to Kim's story and to Lori's story and to Amy's story and to Anto. Anto, who's a, a, a buddy of both of ours, uh, recently did her interview. Listen to any of those interviews. And there's dozens more coming uh, right down the pike. Uh, Miliana, I am so excited to have you come to my retreat again and to work directly side by side with me. Uh, we're going to really make some massive difference in more women's lives. And these are women who, as you know, are my clients and they come back for, for deeper expansion and, and we're basically compressing time rather than taking 10 to 20 years to accomplish goals like you did, you compress time. So in two years and less than that, actually, because it was really this last year, I've just been building on what you did for the first year. You've compressed that time rather than waiting until you're 45 and miserable and unhappy, you decided, no, my life is important. I'm going to invest in myself. I'm going to make this happen. Your husband is overjoyed with the progress that you've made. And, um, and that's just, that just tickled my heart so much, uh, as you know. And I'm actually looking forward to seeing you again in May. And then I'm going to see you in your home city. So Yay. I'm looking so forward to that. So it's going to be... Uh, really a lot of fun. Thank you so much for sharing your story, Miliana. We will see you around, but before we get, let you go, I want you to tell people where they can find you if they'd like to work with you um, as a transformational coach with your HNLP work or, or anything else. Where can people find you, Miliana? Yeah. Well, first of all, Mo, thank you for helping me. My dreams make a reality. You're welcome. Um, huge, huge honor. Um, and I love you a lot. Thank you. Um, you're not just a coach, you're a friend, you're like a family member, really. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, if you want to get in touch with me, um, go to milianademori.com. Uh, you can find me on my website. I've got Instagram, miliana.de.mori. And uh, yeah, get in touch. It will be my honor to help you remove anything that is holding you back. Awesome. Awesome. Miliana, again, thank you for visiting with me. And folks, I'm Mo Fall at MoFall.com. Uh, please book your Clarity Call if you haven't done so. Take what you will from this beautiful story Miliana shared with you, her journey. And her journey is continuing just like all of ours. But she got a boost in the arm because she did the work 
required to become a higher version of herself and move into her dreams. Her dreams are out there. She decided to move into her dreams with her own soul's expansion. Let's do that for you as well. Mofall.com, book your clarity call. We'll see you next time. Miliana, thank you so much for joining me. Everyone, we'll see you next time on Bring Your Soul to Work interview series. Bye, Miliana. Thank you, Mo. Bye. Bye, everybody.